Okay. Happy Friday, my movie peeps. How are you doing? I hope everyone had a wonderful first week of the new year, 2024, baby. Whoopa, 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 whoopa. It's so nice to see all you wonderful people here in the chat with me. Thank you for coming by uh, today. What I thought we'd be talking about is the upcoming movies of 2024. Because, uh, look, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, I'm the movie hype man. I try to get you excited for everything. This might be a mid-year. Uh, there's some great movies coming out, but also not a lot. Maybe it's the year we needed. You know, we had a year filled with like back-to-back -back hit, banger, banger, banger. And then we had the pandemic and the Hollywood strike. Maybe we need a calm year before the storm. So uh, we're going to get into all that, but I definitely want to go ahead and let's just say, hi, daddy. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, three street fans. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, 2024 looks pretty bad for movies. See, I'm not the only one. I've been seeing so much. Y'all say it after I did my most anticipated videos of 2024. Some of y'all started looking for your own and y'all were like, yeah, this, 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 not, this might not be the year 2025 though. That year, I'm looking forward to everything coming out then, man. Okay, let's see what's up. Hey, Chris. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Thank you so much for joining me on here. Oh, let me see. Uh, oh, eh, I wish I knew how to sing the anthem, man. I love that show, though. I love that show, though. Uh, The Goat is Live. I appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate it. I love it. Soap, 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 soap. Just great to see all y'all faces. Okay, so before we get into all this here, so I'm going to basically get your guys' opinion on the movies you think will be the best, the worst, predicting which ones will flop, which ones will hit a billion dollars, that kind of stuff. Uh, just before I went live, I finished recording a video where I talked like freaking an hour where I went through all the exciting horror movies coming out next year. I'm going to have to edit that beast tonight, and hopefully it goes up tomorrow. So I'm not going to talk so much about the upcoming horror movies because – that's going to be the video I post tomorrow, but everything else, whether it's blockbusters, comedies, actions, dramas, you know, you can still ask me a question about the horror stuff, but uh, a lot of that I'm going to say for that video. Just wanted to throw that out there for, for some of my peeps, but other than that, man, uh, let's just get into it, okay? And also, feel free to drop in your questions, your, your concerns about what you're thinking for 2024 movies, good or bad, as long as you're being respectful. I'll put it up on the screen. Um... So let's go, man. Should we just start with uh, the comic book movies of 2024, baby? Because I think that's what we want to talk about, right? So uh, 2024 comic book movies, uh, man, it's uh, it's not looking like an exciting year, if I'm being honest with you. Oh, I wish I lived that far to that year. Uh, all right. So let's look at all the superhero movies coming in 2024. And... Uh, I guess I'm going to determine flops, best, worst. I can rank them for you, telling you which I think will be the best. Let's start off with, I think we'll go from, from what I think will be the worst going up until the best, right? So we only got, what, five? Yeah, let's see. How many do we got here? Okay, we got Madam Web. We got Deadpool 3. We got Craven the Hunter, uh, Joker 2, and Venom 3. Okay, so that that's five, right? Okay. All right. So going from what I think will be the worst to the best, we looking at it right here, Madam Web. Okay, nothing against the beautiful women that are in this movie. I mean, that's the main reason I'm buying a ticket. And in fact, I said it myself. You can go watch my trailer breakdown video. The trailer kind of surprised me a little bit where I was like, oh, I think I'm actually going to have fun. I just don't want another Sony spinoff to be like Morbius because I'm glad if you enjoyed Morbius. But when I went to go watch Morbius, I was bored. I was dreading it. I was like... Okay, let's uh let's keep this moving, Jared Little. Yep, yep, there it is. Where's all the Spider-Man Easter eggs? You took them out, Sony. So I'm not expecting big things from Madam Web, and I'm expecting this to be a little corny, and, and they're definitely juicing the Spider-Man brand like crazy, man. Um, you know, I'm already throwing people in here like we have Toby and Madam Web. The only way Toby shows up in Madam Web if, if there's a scene where it's like the universe is like a web. And there is multiple out there. And then you just see Toby, but from a clip from his old Spider-Man movies. I don't think it'll be anything new. I Maybe they could use an unused clip from Spider-Man No Way Home. But I do not expect Andrew, Toby, no giant cameos. Uh, but I do like the premise of the movie. You know, the, the whole time loop thing, trying to stop a serial killer going into the past. I'm curious how they handle the Uncle Ben part of it and Peter Parker. But 
everything to me I think is going to scream kind of generic superhero movie, especially since it's going for that 2000s vibe because that's when the movie is taking place, which could feel a little nostalgic to us. We grew up with 2000s superhero movies, whether it was Fox, uh, Sam Raimi, Spider-Man. So, yeah, but. I think this will end up being probably, quote unquote, the worst or, or, you know, the one that's like least exciting, the one we don't think about. And it, it'll definitely be on not a lot of people's minds because it's the first comic book movie of the year. Like we're literally getting this in what, a couple weeks? People, uh, Once you see it, you're going to forget about it the next week. So I'm putting Madam Web at the bottom, but watch it. It becomes my favorite by the end of the year. Let's see. OK, from there, it's a toughie, man. <laughs> Cause it's either between Craven or Venom Three, and uh, I oh man, I, I'm trying to go with what's the next worst. Um, going up the list, you know what? I, Venom has proven itself in some way to the fan base. Well, you know, I can't deny that. But then you you know, Craven has the R-rated factor. He's biting people's noses off, and you got Rhino in there. I'm I'm going to go with Craven. I'm going to go with Craven as the second at the bottom of the best uh the worst to the best comic book movies in there. Look, definitely the R rating is 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 holding this movie up a lot. Okay? I'm looking at Craven the Hunter would have had zero interest in it. You tell me it's R rated. I'm going to get blood. I'm going to get him biting noses. Gee, all right. How how much is this Sony? You need a 50? All right, break 100. Okay. That's what I'm thinking with Craven the Hunter. The R-rated stuff is going to take it to the next level. The action scenes could also be pretty cool. Uh, although I'm not loving the, the kind of new powers that they've given Craven in this movie where he has, like, all animal abilities or he can see through animals. So, like, if there's a, a hawk in the sky, he has, like, a Bluetooth connection with that hawk and it can see down. I'm like... That's a cool power, but I don't know if that's a power I want on Craven the Hunter. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. That's going to be an interesting part of the movie. Then you have Rhino showing up. So I'm curious to the Rhino design, how much screen time Rhino is going to get in there. What kind of fight scenes Craven is going to have with Rhino. Um, and I, since this one's R-rated and Craven's actually being, you know, hurting people like biting noses. It's like, oh, did Sony finally learn they made a villain? into an actual villain in a villain solo movie? Y you're doing crazy things, Sony. You're doing crazy things. Because that's been the major problem with a lot of these villain solo movies. They're not villains. They're anti-heroes. They're given sympathetic background stories where it's like, yo, they don't really have a reason to fight Spider-Man because they're all misunderstood and we're put in a bad situation. Like, that's all I'm saying. So Craven might stand out. It just sucks that it took Sony this long to realize yeah, Kevin Feige's not going to let our universe merge with his. We're in a separate one. All right, no time to be friendly. Let's go R-rated. We're in our own universe. <sighs> Venom 2 should have been your first R-rated Sony spinoff movie. You had Carnage. Can you imagine what we missed out on with Carnage and an R-rated Venom movie? Bro. And they killed Carnage off, so it's like, pfft, can't even get him back. Went to the gym today, so I'm feeling myself. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm going to put that second. I, I do think it has potential, but the, the R rating is really craving it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm saying. Then from there, I'm going Venom 3. You guys know me. I, I'm not the biggest Venom fan. I'm glad there are people who love this series. Like, like seriously, they're like, Eddie Brock is hilarious. Their relationship is funny. These movies are awesome. There's the first movie has its moments, and I just really enjoy the second movie for having Carnage. Even if it's not R rated, it's just cool to see Carnage finally live action, fighting with Venom. It had enough stuff in there where I was like, okay, I, I like this, I enjoy this. But after teasing me that this Venom was gonna fight Spider Man and it didn't happen, Pusowski, why do I care? Why, why do I care? I, I'm no offense, but like, how could that happen? We, I sat in that theater through Venom 2 like, I actually like that one. And I see that post credit scene, him licking Tom Holland's face. We've all wanted to lick Tom Holland's face. <laughs> right? So it's like, oh, it's happening. Oh, dude, they're actually going to do it. It's going to be ridiculous and dumb as hell. But you know what? Venom and Spider-Man together, that's always a good time. Then we saw the post credit scene for No Way Home and Feige said, nope. <laughs> Back in your garbage universe, buddy. We're going to do our own thing, but uh, we'll take that symbiote off your hands. And I was like, that's why Feige's Feige. Fagoli knows best, and what Fagoli says goes. So 
now Venom is going to be stuck with a trilogy where he never gets to really fight Spider-Man. You know, he that's just not in the cards right now. I'd like to still be delusional and believe that it's happened someday, but yeah, that that that's not going to be the case. So, in my opinion, I, I especially with hearing the plot of this movie, this is the only thing, only because the plot we have heard is not 100% official and it's all rumors. Again, to remind you, the rumored plot is that Eddie, now knowing that there's a Spider-Man out there that was in another universe, and remember that post credit scene in No Way Home, he was like, oh, I guess I got to go talk to this Spider-Man, and then he disappears. When he goes back to his world, he wants to find the Spider-Man of his universe, but surprise, surprise, he's a 10-year-old kid, and the symbiote tells him, in every universe, Spider-Man is destined to kill you, and Brock is told, you got to take care of this little kid. You got to kill him, and Brock's like, I'm not going to do that to a kid. So he basically mentors him and there's supposed to be a scene where like Peter at 10 gets bitten by a spider, but he's allergic. So like Brock takes him to the hospital. Like this is literally the rumored plot. Okay. This is what we've heard that's happening in this movie. If that ends up being the plot, Venom with a 10 year old Peter Parker, who's mentoring him and having this kind of relationship. I, I just don't know how that like a good movie. <laughs> like maybe it could be sweet sentimental it could work out but uh it's like wh why <laughs> again though that is just the rumor plot it's not official so i'm not gonna hold it that bad but if that ends up becoming it i'm putting craven above venom 3 because i just don't know how that works out well uh the only concrete detail we do know about venom 3 is it's gonna start off with him in mexico because we've seen those set photos we've seen those videos he was in mexico in no way home so when he goes back to his world he's in mexico of the sony universe I don't know what's different, but it's Mexico, right? And <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Hopefully, though, it's just not another symbiote bad guy because that would be three symbiote bad guy movies. And it's like, wow, they, they really love them symbiotes. And I know Toxin's supposed to be in there. At this point, I'm just yapping. That's that's my that thought right now with Venom 3. So from there, we go to the big hitters that'll probably end up being this year's Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Across the Spider-Verse, the actual, you know, pretty good uh, comic book movies, which is either um, Joker 2 or Deadpool 3. I'm going to go Joker 2. And a lot of this, I think, will have to do with the musical aspect. Now, I'm not saying that makes it a bad movie or a worse movie. I just know that makes it a less appealing movie to a lot of people out there, especially comic book movie fans. I remember when we first heard Joker 2 is a musical. It's going to have Lady Gaga. And, oh, the, the, the fan base was not happy. Dozens to hundreds of comments going, I'm out. I'm done. Didn't need a sequel either way. That's how a lot of people felt. Nobody wanted to see a Joker 2. They thought it was a good one and done movie. I didn't mind the idea of a sequel, especially if you're bringing Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. Like, I love me Margot Robbie. She'll still probably be my definitive Harley Quinn. Lady Gaga ain't a bad actress. She's really good. Watch A Star is Born. will make you cry. But her as Harley, I'm like, that would be interesting. I want to see that. The, the I don't mind musicals. Like, I, I love La La Land, like, a lot. So he, this movie could work for me. Uh, it could be unexpected. It's not what I'm thinking it's going to be. It could be really good. Heck, it could be an Oscar contender. You don't know. I'm hoping they cook here and they do something good. I think it's going to be a very enjoyable movie. But I think the musical aspect, like I said, is what's going to deter a lot of people away. It's going to be the kind of thing where a lot of comic book movie fans don't rush out to see it. They'll wait to hear what other people said. And if they're like, the musical stuff ain't that bothersome. It's like one or two musical numbers. Watch it. It's good. And then they'll be like, all right, I give it a chance. And then they'll see it and they'll probably end up enjoying it. But I, I, I think this will, at the end of the day, still be one of the good comic book movies. The ones that people will definitely have either number two or number one at the end of 2024. If I end up being wrong and this movie's horrible... That'll be a funny turnout, but that's why we make these predictions, to look back and laugh at ourselves. Uh, but if it, if it wasn't a surprise at all, guys, the best comic book movie of 2024 is going to be Deadpool 3. Uh, this movie, is it, it's, it's all kind of too late to save the comic book genre right now. We've been talking about it the past year, and last year was very much the evidence we needed. Comic book movies are dying, okay? We had a some good ones, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Across the Spider-Verse, but even Guardians of the Galaxy 3 did not hit a billion dollars. And I think if comic book movies were still as consistently good as they were like in the Endgame Infinity War era, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 would have easily hit a billion, but people are tuned out. People don't care. Uh, Marvel has oversaturated uh, the freaking market. 
with too many shows, too many things to keep up with. Like, I'm uh, uh I'll save that for another time. I, I was just gonna mention uh, I got sent the first couple episodes of Echo, but I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. And but even but then like people aren't some people aren't gonna want to watch Echo. They're just not gonna tune in. They're like, what what does this have to do with anything? At the end of the day, the reason you're going to see Deadpool 3 and why I think it'll be unaffected by a lot of what's going on, two people we're staring at right now, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. This is supposed to be the no way home of the Fox universe. It's going to be the kind of celebration, the looking back at those movies that kind of started it all. We, we watched them as a kid, you know, the early days and celebrate the end of the Fox world, which I think is, is really a good thing. And like how long have we been waiting for these two guys to be next to each other i thought it was never going to happen after logan i thought hugh jackman put up the claws said that was all good but i'm you know some people say it ruins it but i think i'm happy he agreed to come back here so i think this movie is gonna do well they're also doing things that are like other marvel projects have been suffering from like ryan reynolds and director sean levy said they are filming in physical locations they're not they're trying to do as little green screen backdrops as possible and man I can't tell you some of the like lazy, ugly looking Marvel movies we've gotten just because people are in front of the volume or the green screen and it just doesn't hit the same. Uh, th the cameos I think here are definitely going to hit, especially if we get some like James Marsden coming back as Cyclops in a classic X-Men outfit like Wolverine has right now. That's the only cameo I need, homie. That's the only cameo I need. And it's multiverse hopping. It's treated like a buddy adventure movie. It's going to, I think it's going to hit all the notes right now. Is it going to be a perfect comic book movie? That'll be the thing. Cause nowadays everybody expects the movie to be a hundred percent, no flaws, no corny jokes, nothing like that. And they get overly harsh on these comic book movies. I still think when it comes down to it, this will be the best or the most enjoyable comic book movie of the year. Uh, now the question is, will it hit a billion? Because last year, no comic book movies hit a billion, at least not to my knowledge. You, what did hit a billion or close to a billion? Oppenheimer, a freaking biopic movie about a guy who built an atomic bomb. Like I did never thought in a million years that movie would be so close to, to a billion dollar mark. But it just goes to show you how tired audiences are of the comic book genre. I had a feeling Barbie would hit a billion because there's a large female audience out there and guys like me were interested to see it. So... That made sense. Deadpool 3, I am, if I had to put a percentage on it, I'm going to go 70%. It does hit a billion, but uh, that's hard to say. I. It's all going to depend on the big bang of that trailer. You, you see people saying 100% it's going to hit a billion. I want to believe that, buddy. I, I really do, and I, and I don't doubt you. They could very likely. See, I think that's a realistic guess right here. Uh, This one right here. Is it on the screen yet? Right there. This person saying 700 million. I think that's very realistic. I think that that's probably a good guess. Again, that'll come down to the quality of the movie. If the movie is good, it'll probably hit that billion. If it is gets hit with like mediocre reviews or saying like it's fun, but it's just about seeing these two guys together in the action. Everything else is cameo fest, generic, it's bad. Um, I think that's a very real guess. You know, 80, 800 million, again, yep. These are very, like, realistic guesses. This is what I'm thinking. I'd love to think this is this makes a billion, but it's just the comic book world isn't what it used to be, you know? And see, 600 million at the lowest. Dude, if, it, if this movie makes under 600 million, although it'll probably be a profit for the movie, in the comic book world, I consider that a flop. <laughs> like, not really a flop because it makes a profit, but to me, it's like this movie should have made so much more. So, I don't know. To me, this will this will be the biggest standout of 2024. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, I you know I'm curious to see what uh sorry uh what like Joker will make because that was rated R and I'm assuming this one will be rated R too. That one magically made a billion dollars, but I guess it shouldn't be that surprising. Joker's like one of the most iconic villains ever, and they did eh, somewhat justice in that movie. I quite enjoyed it. But with the musical aspect here and people saying we don't need a sequel and, you know, DC just has like a bad reputation right now. But then again, the bad reputation could be to the connected universe because all the stuff that isn't in the connected universe, whether it's the Batman or stuff like the Joker, tends to do a lot better. Um, uh, do you think do you guys think Joker hits a billion again? I don't think it hits a billion again. The, yeah, yeah. See, another one. Yes. Yeah, he's people saying six to seven hundred million. That's most likely the case. That that will be it. It'll be seven, someone just said seven million. I think I think you meant seven hundred million. But yeah, uh, 
between seven. Yeah, that's probably it. I don't know if it hits a billion again. I think that was kind of like an anomaly. Um, not an anomaly in the way the Aquaman hit a billion, but it's just like, okay, we got a solo Joker movie that was done. The magic of that is kind of over. Uh, between that, though, looking at these other three, it, it has to be Venom that'll make the most out of the other two, I assume. Um, I don't think Craven, especially with the R rating, that already makes it go down. It'd be awesome if they made the last Venom movie R rated, but I doubt they'll do that knowing that Venom, I think the first one made 800 million. The second one made 600, I think. Um, so this one's bound for at least 500 million, which would be really good. Uh, then I think it'll be Craven and Madam Web will probably be the lowest earning one of them. So that's my thoughts on the comic book movies. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's really great seeing your guys' opinion on everything that we have coming out here. That, that I'm glad a lot of us are agreeing. It's, it's like it's it's such a kind of a year. There's a lot of exciting stuff still, but it's such a like predictable year. It's like we could tell what will be the winners, what will not be. Someone said 200 mil for Madam Web. You know, honestly, 200 mil might be close to a win for them. I don't think they made this for that much. This was probably like a 90, 700, uh, 90 or 70 million movie, you know, but who knows? All right. So, from there, um, let's just start going day by day into uh, the movies of 2024. So this right here, I found The Hollywood Reporter has the biggest movies. I just thought I'd go through them, say whether how much I think they'll make, whether they'll be good movies, bad. Well, you know, whatever the case, and we'll see what goes on. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on the horror movie ones because I mentioned earlier in the stream, I made a whole video talking about horror movies being released and uh, my, my thoughts on those that will be released tomorrow. So, all right, Mean Girls. Why didn't we just make a Mean Girls sequel? I actually love that first Mean Girls. I, 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 uh, I'm not even kidding. I was kind of disappointed when I found out this was just a remake in a musical. You know, I was kind of like, oh, why couldn't we just, why couldn't we just do a sequel? Bring Lindsay Lohan back. You got a lot of the legacy characters from that original movie back. The principal, Tina Fey, all that. I was like, oh, but you know, if this your thing, musicals and stuff. Go see it. I, I I don't know if I'm going to see it. You know, I, I, I don't know. I really do love that first movie, though. That's like an I, I still quote that other one. She doesn't even go here. I love that first Mean Girls. Uh, the Book of Clarence. So this is the movie uh, with Lakeith Stanfield, who I really like. I, Lakeith Stanfield is great. Uh, the premise doesn't hook me in. So he's essentially like around the same time Jesus is around. And he tries to like con artists in the same way. Well, I wouldn't say Jesus was a con artist. Don't want to offend anybody. But it, it, it's him trying to jump off that. I feel like this is a movie that's not, not a lot of people's radar. I Understandable why it, it's in a January release. Only reason I would see it is for Lakeith Stanfield because I, I, I really like him. Okay. Now, Argyle. I saw Jeremy Johns put this on like his most anticipated list of 2024. Every time I go to the movie theaters, they play that Argyle trailer, and I'm sick of it. I hate this trailer. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it. And I got to be honest with you, Matthew Vaughn, I want you to do something different. This feels like Kingsman to me. And again, not hating on the movie, but I just like Matthew Vaughn to me was a director I was really excited about in Hollywood. When he came out with Kick-Ass, which again, if you have not seen Kick-Ass, go check that movie out. Probably one of my personal favorite films. I really love it. I was like, this guy's going to do amazing things. And I remember he was one point rumored to be like the director of this Superman. And I was like, oh, Matthew Vaughn with, with a Superman movie. That would be great. And then he just got stuck making Kingsman movies. Uh, Kingsman 1, Kingsman 2, Kingsman prequel. He's going to make Kingsman 3. And now he's making this Argyle movie that's Kingsman-esque. It's not connected to the Kingsman world, but it's about spies, just like in Kingsman. And then there's all this stuff. And, the, you know, Henry Cavill's great and all that. The premise isn't fine. I'm going to check it out and enjoy it. But I'm like, I don't know. Matthew Vaughn, I want you to do something more because you're a really good director. But you're right. Like, I've seen a lot of people say um, Argyle looks fun. I, I'm not a big fan of Henry Cavill's hairdo in this movie. Let me... I was like looking at him and he looks like that one guy from Street Fighter. Uh is that with the with the blonde hair? Let me see. Let me pull up a photo of his hair cuz I was like how do you how do you make Henry Cavill look like he has a bigger forehead than me? I got a big forehead, okay? Four fingers long. Three fingers. It's shrunk. Oh my goodness. Eat your greens, boys. How did they do that to him? <laughs> this is a handsome man and it looks like it gave him forehead implants. So that's funny to me. <laughs> and 
aside from that though it does look interesting sam rockwell's in it um yeah i'll check it out i'll just like mm. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. All right. Now, moving on here. Lisa Frankenstein. They just released this trailer. I talk about it in the horror video. It looks like a fun horror comedy. Uh, Cole, uh, Cole Sprouts uh, and was it uh, some something Newton? The girl who was the new daughter of Ant-Man in Quantumania. I forget. Peyton Newton? No, something new. I'm sorry. I forget the name. Either way, looks like it could be fun. I, I, I Trailer, yeah. I don't have much else to say about it, if I'm being honest. We just talked about Madam Web. <laughs> we'll see how that one goes. The Bob Marley movie, I'm actually curious to see that. I've listened to Bob Marley music. I, I, I like it, but I have I know nothing about this man's life. So I always like that. When I see true stories and I know nothing about them, I'll be amazed. I'll, I'll, I'll end up checking that out. So that'll be good. Okay, Dune Part 2. This is one where we got to chat a little bit here, my friends. We got to be honest with ourselves. What are we thinking with Doom Part 2? Like, Dennis Villeneuve, amazing director, right? That No doubt about it. Love his Blade Runner. Love what he's done. It's definitely, I think, going to be a good movie. My thing is, I want Dennis Villeneuve to have a box office hit. And the first Dune made, what, $400 million? And it was iffy if he was going to be able to make his sequel because they're like, I don't think the studio was that happy with it. This is supposed to be the movie where all the setup from the first movie is going to pay off. This is, I think, all going to have to depend on how action packed and the word of mouth that'll carry the movie. Cause I don't, I don't see this making a whole lot of money opening weekend. If I'm being honest, I think it'll be like 70, 60 million, but you know, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, they, they, they are like the hot celebrities right now. People will go see their dang movies. I know I'm going to want to see it, but, um, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, another 400 million probably I, I think is right. You know, it'd be awesome if, if it hit these kind of numbers, 550 to 700 million. That would be awesome. I really don't want it to flop because uh, if Dennis Villeneuve unfortunately has this many flops on his hand, studios just aren't going to trust him with big stuff like this. He'll have to go back to indie things, which wouldn't be so bad, you know, story, story focused stuff. But he's just one of those directors where I'm like, man, he has the talent of like a Christopher Nolan, but yet. Christopher Nolan is like the only director I can think of right now that when they make a movie, people just go see it, whether it's Tenet, Inception, Interstellar, uh, Oppenheimer. If Christopher Nolan makes a movie, people go see it mainly for Christopher Nolan. I, I think Oppenheimer is proof of that. You're telling me people were clamoring for a movie about Oppenheimer? Um, I don't think so. Um, and I would love Dennis Villeneuve to get that same kind of Christopher Nolan appeal where it's like, oh, he, he's getting one. Everybody get ready, you know? I don't know. That's just my opinion. All right, let's go. Roadhouse. Oh, they just dropped the first deal. And I was like, dude, this is why I want freaking Jake Gyllenhaal to be the freaking Batman of the DCU. So this is a remake of an old Patrick Swayze movie. Check it out if you haven't. The movie's called Roadhouse. Uh, he's like a... He's like a guy who gets hired at bars that are too rowdy to kind of be the bodyguard and settle fights so that these bars aren't that dangerous. Uh, they're definitely going with a different route in here. I think he's like an MMA fighter that gets banned. And so he forced, he's forced into a life of bodyguarding in bars and stuff like that. But Jake Gyllenhaal, dude, this man, I really hope he ends up becoming DCU Batman. <laughs> I, I, I know there's probably other choices people want, like, uh, Who's the guy? Jensen Ackles. I think I've been hearing. Who else was people wanting? Um, the guy who plays Reacher, Alan Richardson. I've seen people wanting him. But to me, it would be freaking Jake Gyllenhaal, dude. I think he has the range to play it serious. He has that Oscar acting. But he can also be campy. I love Bubble Boy. And look at them pecs. Look at them. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It, and it sucks. Jake Gyllenhaal was upset. This will be coming to streaming. It's not going to be going to um, theaters. He was really upset about that. But, you know, what What? What can we do? I am curious about it, but no point wondering about the uh, box office because it's a streaming movie. So let's just see if it does the numbers. Uh, the American Society of Magical... Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Um... For this movie, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the full title of this, but this looks kind of like an interesting movie. So if you haven't seen the trailers for it, this is a real movie, and that is the title. And uh, it's it's almost like that Key and Peele skit that they came out with years ago. I don't know if you guys seen it, where they did like Harry Potter, but in the hood, I, I guess kind of like it. And uh, 
that's that's what people were describing it so it's basically like harry potter uh for for black people and it's that kind of world the trailer actually looked pretty interesting and hilarious if they play into that comedy i'm gonna i'm gonna like it i'm gonna enjoy it i also want to say this actor what is his name he was in the pokemon movie justin was it uh uh what was oh detective pikachu there i forgot the name uh let me look it up detective pikachu uh, he's come a long way. Justice, there we go. Justice Smith. Uh, honestly, he used to be one of those actors to me that when he popped up in a role, I found him a little annoying. I didn't love his character in the Jurassic World movies. He was kind of mad at me in the in Detective Pikachu. But lately, he's just been really good. Dungeons and Dragons. I thought he was fantastic in there. I'm liking what I'm seeing in the in the trailer for the American Society of Magical. I'm I'm liking his performance in there. So I'm gonna check it out. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Awesome. Okay. Now, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm curious about how this one turns out, y'all. Because lifelong uh, Ghostbuster fan, I've always loved the series. And uh, if you've been online as a movie fan, you know there's been so many ups and downs. Okay. You, you think about people talking about woke, go broke, that kind of stuff. Ooh, you were not around for the nerds online yelling about an all-female Ghostbusters. It was it was a hellish time. No joke. So then Afterlife came out, and I quite enjoyed Afterlife. Uh, it's not the classic, typical Ghostbuster movie I was expecting, but I thought all the cast did really well. Uh, I thought the way they played tribute to Harold Ramis. Uh, was it Harold Ramis? Right. I don't want to get that. Oh, geez. I think I just said the wrong name. Oh, no. No, I said the right name. Okay, good. Harold Ramis. Yeah, the way they paid tribute to Harold Ramis in that movie, I thought was done well. You know, some people look back on it and go, eh, maybe they just shouldn't have done that. So now we're moving past all that. We did the setup. We brought back the world. They made enough money where it warranted a sequel. And we're here at Frozen Empire. This is a classic Ghostbuster movie. We're back in New York. They're not focusing on nostalgia. They're not bringing back any old villains and going, oh, that guy from the painting that was haunting, he's the villain now. I like that they're bringing someone new. And in fact, they just released Funko Pops for this movie where they actually name. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. Uh, where they actually name uh, the new uh, villain. And I was like, oh, OK. Now we have a name to go with it. Uh, let's go. Let's see if I can pull up an image of it. Here we go. So the name of the villain and kind of a look at it, you know, I'm going to buy this is called Grr Aka. I don't know if you roll your R's, but I decided to. And I like the little design that we got of them. Uh, there's going to be other new ghost monsters in here, like one named Pukey. Look, look at that little thing. That looks fun. Uh, I also like the new Ghostbuster jackets they're coming out with. My thing is that, like, I just don't feel the hype for this. I, I don't think people are as excited for Ghostbusters as they used to be. And I feel like this will unfortunately just kind of underperform. So I don't think this movie will be bad. I'm kind of in the middle if it'll exceed or just end up being kind of a, it was fine. It was good. It was enjoyable. I don't think it was anything special, uh, but it was good. And I think because if it just ends up being a okay movie, it's going to underperform. So I like as much as excited as I am for this movie. And I like, uh, and I, and I hope it's good as a Ghostbuster fan. Part of me wonders if this will be one of like the first quote unquote flops or just underperformers of the year just because I, I don't see the hype right now but hopefully if the movie is is gangbusters awesome paul rudd knocks it out of the park and people are like no this is good you got to go see it it'll have legs and perform well but i don't know if it's looking good for ghostbusters all right mickey 17 a lot of talk about this movie and it is one i'm kind of anticipating for this year it is starring robert panson i believe it has the director who did parasite uh, Bong Jung ho I think is how you say his name. Uh, really loved Parasite. Uh, Robert Pattinson's awesome. I just wish we had some details about this movie. I, I wish I kind of, I want to know what it's about. What does it say? Uh, Robert Pattinson, as an expendable employee sent to colonize a foreign world who, when he dies on dangerous missions, is simply replaced with a clone who shares his memories. Oh! That's the first time I'm finding out that plot. That sounds pretty cool. Okay, so, oh, dude, it's going to have almost like a time loop thing without the time loop. So you're on a planet. You, you, you're exploring it. Some alien comes and kills you. They got a clone in the microwave. You come back out. You do things again. I like the sound of that. That looks cool. And I think Robert Pattinson is becoming one of the uh, one of the better actors of our generation. I can't wait to see him in the Batman Part 2. Uh, it'll just come down to how this one performs. I hope it does well. 
but I'm I'm looking forward to that. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> the the beginning sounds just like Avatar. Yeah, yeah. The plot piques my interest. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are agreeing. That plot piques my interest. Okay, cool. Mickey 17. Let's look forward to it. Okay. I just saw the trailer for this when I was doing my uh, my list of every movie coming out in two, the, every horror movie coming out in 2024. I'm actually curious about it. I don't care too much about the Omen franchise. I do think it's kind of cool to see like a little kid do evil things and it's like, oh, you little devil or oh, you Dennis the Menace with a devil. Uh, but like the tagline of this movie got me where it was like, basically the movie looks like it's the church creating the little devil, the Omen, so that people have something to fear and when they fear they turn to religion so it's kind of like a create a problem and be the solution kind of thing and i was like oh that's a that's an interesting premise let's see if the movie delivers but we'll see we'll see i talk about that more tomorrow okay godzilla x kong let's get into it boys let me let me grab my axe for this okay so look at that we're exactly the same right here all right Godzilla X Kong the New Empire. I I want to know how this turns out because you have to remember Godzilla vs Kong I thought was a big movie. That's a movie that I feel could have made 700 800 possibly even a billion dollars. Problem was came out during the pandemic. Everything that the MonsterVerse led into, all the movies, all the setup dang, they released during a time where theaters were closed. It sucks, man. And it, it was so bad. I remember, I think, um, the people who own the rights to Godzilla and Kong, was it Lionsgate? Uh, they were so unhappy with the deal Warner Brothers made, they parted ways with them. And I think now there was Sony or Universal? I think Sony. Uh, or Paramount. Uh, either way now, can this movie hit what Godzilla vs. Kong was going to do? I don't know. Because now that we've already gotten Godzilla vs. Kong, it's a situation of, is that magic over? We already saw these two titans on screen. We already saw them battle. It, it was fun. It was bad. I've seen people go both ways. I think movie was fun enough, but I get comments every day that the movie sucked. Um, is that magic gone? It's like, well, we've already seen them fight. Why do we care to see that again? Oh, they'll team up this time. And also, people didn't like the cartoony vibe of it, you know? And after a movie like Godzilla Minus One, is this kind of the movie people want to see? At the end of the day, I think it, I, I think it will do very well. Uh, I don't know about the critic score. <laughs> I, I'm having a feeling the critic score for this is going to go somewhere in like the 30, 40 percent just because of how cartoony they're taking the franchise now. And I don't think that's bad. I, I, I actually prefer it. The way Adam Wingard is treating this like it's a Saturday morning cartoon. I think he recently did an interview with Empire Magazine and he compared Godzilla X Kong to he wants you to watch this movie and feel what you felt as an eight-year-old walking down the toy aisle. So it's going for like a very commercial, you know, heightened kid on sugar kind of feel. And I actually kind of like that. You know, these movies don't have to be Godzilla minus one. We, we, we know what we're doing here in America. We're, we're making the blockbuster, the popcorn flicks, the turn off your brain, have fun, see big butt monsters fight each other, right? So I think it'll be a good time. Uh, I don't think it'll have the best critic score. I am thinking it'll end up being like, let, let me see what some of you guys have been guessing here. Uh, uh, let's see, 750? I don't know. I feel like that's uh, that's very ambitious. I think it'll be, you know what? No, never mind. Now that I think about it, yeah. The five, you know, 500 mil at best, that's kind of a, a good guess. That, that that That's definitely a good guess right there. Um you know, if they if they tease a good post credit scene and they're 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 teasing they're gonna make one more, that would make it more fun. That would warrant some people to go see it. At the end of the day, the move the, what this movie is gonna benefit from is that audiences are tired of comic book movies. So this is the alternative. It's like, oh, no, the superhero movie, dumb. Oh, big monkey fight big lizard. Oh no, they team up. Me buy ticket. That's what I'm thinking is gonna work in this movie's favor. Is just people tired of comic book movies and they want something kind of different. And this fits into that category of for the comic book fans, but it isn't a comic book movie. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think it's going to have a low critic score, but I think it will perform very well. I wish it would be a billion dollar hit, but I feel like the magic is gone. If this was the first Godzilla vs. Kong, I think we could possibly be talking about a billion dollar hit, but the magic is gone. We've already seen these Titans together. Now we'll see how this goes. Okay, but let me put this up. All right, so that's my thoughts on there. <clears throat> All right, 
Rebel Moon Part 2. Oh, gosh. Okay, so this one's coming out this year. Now, again, this will be a streaming release, mainly on Netflix. I'm sure they'll have, like, theater things, but they're not going to do probably enough widescreen releases where the box office can really be uh, determined. I love Zack Snyder. I, uh, I really do like him. In fact, today I was eating my breakfast here while uh, trying to figure out what mo videos and stuff I was going to make, and I saw, like, his... um his fitness video where he's like, oh, this is what's in my fridge. This is what's in my gym. And I'm like, oh, Zack Snyder's not such a nice guy. I, I, I really enjoy him. But I did not love Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon was a disappointment to me, unfortunately. And it was such a disappointment to me. I have no interest to watch <laughs> Rebel Moon Part 2. Like, I just didn't get into the characters that much, the group dynamic, the story at hand. I wish I got into it more. Maybe when his director's cut of the first movie comes out, I'll check it out. But they're saying that director's cut is not going to be released until after part two. And then part two also is supposed to be having a director's cut. So it's like, why do I got to watch four of technically the same movies? You know, like, it, it just like that rose me the wrong way. Um, but, you know, this, the, these movies, I think, are also going to determine Zack Snyder's continuing with, uh, with Netflix. Because they got that deal with him. And they're funding his movies. They're making these movies with him. Uh, I hope he, they do the numbers he wants, but right now I, th I think I'm gonna let it go by. But if I start seeing some of my movie mutuals say, oh, this one, this one's actually makes up for the last one. This one's good. I'll check it out, but I'm not going to rush to watch it on Netflix when it comes out. Unfortunately, challengers, Tom Holland, if you're watching me, buddy, go grab a drink, go uh, do something else. Cause, uh, I know my friend, I know it would hurt me too. I'm actually looking forward to this. If you have not seen the trailer, this was a movie that was supposed to be released last year, but the Hollywood strike and it making it so that celebrities cannot promote their own movie, they thought it would hurt the film since Zendaya can't get on interviews and talk about it, so they moved it to 2024. But the this basically looks like a, almost another version of Gone Girl, and I loved Gone Girl. So essentially, Zendaya gets together with these two tennis players. She's basically jumping back and forth in a relationship with them. And then we're just following her over the years and how this three-way relationship kind of unfolds and gets to the worst. Uh, everything about it looks really good to me though. Uh, I'm not sure box. I can never determine box office wise, how this does because the Hollywood is so weird. We don't have movie stars, but if you have a good premise with a movie star, then you have the mixture for doing something good. And I feel like this is that. Cause I remember when this trailer came out, Everybody was talking about it because they were um, they were bagging on Tom Holland. They're like, oh, come get your girl. How could she be making out with two people? I know Tom Holland's hurting. I'm like, oh, man, leave Tom alone, man. He's got enough stuff to worry about. So I feel like, again, th this will be one of those movies that social media kind of riles up. Zendaya is really uh, hot at, in terms of, like, popularity. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like this could do very well at the box office. Uh, and I think it, it'll be a good movie. It'll be like a, a 90, 80 hit on Rotten Tomatoes, hopefully. It's one I'm looking forward to. Okay. All right. Civil War. This one I'm curious about, y'all. This one I'm like, mm, okay. It, it, you, we all know. We live in a very divided country right now. If you're in the U.S., I'm sure wherever you are, there's probably also division. But even just in the movie community, there is division and all this. And so what Alex Garland here, who made Ex Machina, one of my favorite uh Thr sci-fi thrillers go check it out if you haven't already that ending to that movie still f's me up i was like oh shoot. and uh but i haven't loved his movies ever since then uh annihilation and what was it men uh they didn't hit with me this i think will will hit with me this looks good so basically texas and california of all places they team up they secede from the u.s and now people are just fighting each other and we're following the aftermath uh, I think this is also an A24 movie, and when you watch the trailer, it looks like a kind of a bigger budget. You also have, what's his name? He played Jesse Plemons, uh, who does that really funny line in the movie, uh, what was it, uh, Game Night? <laughs> if you haven't seen Game Night also, go check that out. Where it's like, how does that profit Frito lay? This guy. But uh, he's in it, and he, dude, uh, he, he gives me, in the, in the nicest way possible, serial killer vibes. And his one little scene in the trailer, I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, I do not want to be alone with him. Great actor, though. Great actor. I mean that as a compliment. Uh, so I'm curious about this. You know, it, it's definitely a movie that feels almost very, um, how do I say it, uh, appropriate for our time with our division and all that. So it could be something interesting to watch. I, I'm, yeah, yeah. Here we go. All right, let's see. Idea of you. Never heard of this. A beloved romance novel. Uh, it has Anne Hathaway, though. That's cool. Um, not for, okay. 
Fall Guy. Another one. I'm curious to see how this ends up. If you haven't seen the trailer for Fall Guy, recommend it to you. Oh, geez, why do I keep end up doing that? Um, I recommend it because uh, the movie does look uh, pretty interesting. So basically, this is based off a show in the 1980s. It's going to be starring uh, Ryan Gosling. And it's basically him as this like stunt guy. And then he like finds out one of the stars went missing and he has to go save him. It looks really funny. Ryan Gosling has this underrated comedic talent. It, he showed it off in Barbie. The guy's actually really funny. And he's one of those actors where it's like literally me. Ryan Gosling, literally me. Uh, I, I think it's great. My problem, again, comes down to is we just don't have that movie star effect. If I, I'm going through like Ryan Gosling's resume, you know, he did have Drive, which is now like a cultural hit. Movie guy, movie people love that movie. Uh, we had Blade Runner and stuff like that. Movies that like didn't do grand at the box office. And I was trying to think of the last big movie by himself. You could say Barbie. He was one of the main supporting roles, but I think Barbie was carried by so much other stuff. Ryan Gosling was just like a bonus in that movie. I'm going to be curious about the box office of this one because it'll really showcase how much star power Ryan Gosling has. And after Barbie and Ken and all that and him just being really likable dude, I see the odds in his favor. Uh, I think it'll be a fun movie. Uh, I I for sure want to see it. I'm just curious about the box office pull of this. You know, this could this could be uh, a freaking $30 million opening weekend or it could be, you know, $50 million that leads to like a $300 million, uh, you know, box office run, which would be, I think, great for this movie. So I'm hoping for the best, Ryan Gosling, because. Uh, me and him are bros. I just, you know, I don't talk about that much. But yeah. Back to Black. Uh, this is an A. Is that the Amy Winehouse biopic? That could be interesting. Uh, don't know much about Amy Winehouse. Like I said, always down to check out a true story movie if I don't know uh, what went down. And I, I know a little bit about Amy Winehouse, so that'll be something. Okay, if another one. I'm going to be real curious. So John Krasinski's next directorial debut, he called up all his friends in Hollywood and said, hey, you want to voice an imaginary creature? Because I got you. He's changing lanes. He's not going the Jordan Peele route where he had a, a pretty open career to be a, a direct horror director, right? Because he did the first two Quiet Places. I love those. I think he's definitely a good director. Switching lanes. Family comedy. We'll see how it goes. I, I like the trailer. I think it, it's fine. I definitely think the twist of the movie is going to be that Ryan Reynolds character in here is like an imaginary friend. That's that's for sure like the twist of the movie, right? Like that's so obvious that's what's going to happen. Uh, the comedy is what's going to have to land in here. And I just don't know. I know uh, John Krasinski as an actor is pretty funny. He Jim in the office. He's good and all that. His, but, you know, directing and doing comedy. Some would say that's similar to horror movies. You know, Jordan Peele says that a lot. He says horror and comedy are very similar. And that's probably why he's great at both with Keaton Peel and horror. So you know what? This actually could turn out good for him. Um, I don't know about in terms of flop, but I could also see this end up being like a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes. I, I could just end up seeing that, you know? But um, to me, uh, I, I'm curious. I'm curious. I want John Krasinski to do good. Furiosa. So... I like George Miller. That first, uh, that well, not first, but the last Mad Max movie we had with Tom Hardy. I was hoping we'd continue into that world, and that was a like a, a big surprise hit when that came out at the time. And I think it like even got Oscar contention, made a lot of money at the box office. It was really good. So I had high hopes for this movie, and it, even though it is on my most anticipated, I didn't want to lie to you guys. The trailer and the effects, they're not holding up to that old Mad Max movie. That could very well be because the effects aren't finished. Uh, for this one but there was times where i was like the cinematography and look of this one just don't feel like the last movie they feel a little uh little unpolished there but aside from that Anna taylor joy great actress the furiosa story i am curious about you know we'll find out how she get that bald head how she loses her arm that could be something oh we got chris hemsworth in here i totally forgot that that i think is going to be a big selling point uh furiosa and they made him different, you know. I, I joked about it when I heard the first trailer came out. He's trying to make my nose in Hollywood famous. Only the few in the proud can pull this off. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I this this could this could be good. George Miller's great and all that. Uh I guess that was the only thing is the effects, but that's not that shouldn't be a big deal. Like, if the story's good, the actors are good, 
I can excuse some wonky effects and all that. I guess I was just really wanting it to feel the way that Mad Max. And, you know, a lot of that could just be me romanticizing it. Maybe if I go back and watch Mad Max Fury, Mad Max Fury Road right now, doesn't look as good as I remember. That happens a lot to me, okay? Y you watch Spy Kids now, the first movie, and you're like, I don't remember noticing all these terrible effects when I was a kid. You know, that happens all the time. Happens all the time. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, baby. Disney, do not ruin this. Disney, I'm begging you. So after they took over Fox and they owned that property, they started to get to work. They looked through Fox's lineup and said, what y'all got? What, what can we exploit here? Okay, we're going to do a Home Alone movie on Disney+. Plus. That was horrible. All right, we're going to try again. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Matt Reeves, we're going to match your intensity. Here we are. So it's set in the same universe as the last trilogy, 300 years later, following a legacy member of the Caesar family. I like the trailer. And this is one where I think the effects do match the last movie. What I, what I definitely want to match, though, is the intensity of the story. Because the story in, that, in this last trilogy was epic, man. Uh, so many great moments. It, it's the kind of franchise that really made people go, we need to give Oscars for motion capture work because, you know, uh, um, they're doing some great stuff in there. You know, we got Wes Ball in here. He was granted the keys to Legend of Zelda, going to make that live action. So that makes me also curious and and to see him in here. I, I like his Maze Runner trilogy. I'm not hating on it, but, you know, uh, not to the point where I was like, that's the guy who should take over Kingdom and Planet of the Apes. Box office wise, I was looking. Let's see. How much was it? Uh, let's see. Box office, uh, Planet of the Apes. I think the last one came out in 2017. 490. So that was what the last movie made. So that's kind of like the bar that was set, right? I don't know. I feel like enough time has passed. 2017 has been a long time. I've seen a lot of people love this franchise. Good fans over the years. A big win would be definitely 500 million, right? Five, six, five, 600 million. Yeah, that would be the big win. Uh, as, as long as the movie's good, I think it'll make it. I think this will be like a, a 75 to 80 on Rotten Tomatoes kind of thing. I think people, for the most part, enjoy it. And I'm curious to see where they take the story. You know, 300 years, that's a long time. And they got to have something planned. But then again, Disney sometimes doesn't plan out these things. They just paint it as they go. The Chris Pratt Garfield movie. What are we thinking here, guys? This is this one's going to be like a 30, right? On <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. Watch, this one's going to have like a 90%. I'm not loving the premise of this Garfield movie, if I'm being honest with you guys. Uh, so, you know, it's like, it, it's funny because Garfield is just like a character on its own, but he doesn't really have like a story to go with him other than he loves lasagna and he's lazy. Can't really just make a movie about that. So uh, how about we make Samuel Jackson his dad and they do heists? brilliant write that down make it a film and that's what we got right here <laughs> samuel jackson's garfield's dad and they do heist together i don't know if that's the plot i would have gone with but then again i have no idea the, the last live action garfield movie was him going to london and meeting an identical king cat i repeat a king cat identical garfield so this franchise could literally go anywhere that's where they decided to go with it i'm gonna watch it for the memes I'm going to watch it for the jokes. I'm going to watch it to see if Garfield sounds like freaking Mario. If I can hear, maybe he pulls out his Brooklyn accent. Oh, what's you talking about? Ooh, he didn't even sound like that in the Illumination movie. I'm not expecting great things from this. Uh, Sony movie. Um, you know, Sony's animated department's been up and down. Sometimes they pull out a Spider-Verse and all that. And other times they pull out an Emoji movie. Where this falls? I'm not going to say it's going to be to the level of the Emoji movie, but maybe on that. I, I know I'm, I'm sounding terrible here. I know a lot of people are looking forward to this. Uh, see, Garfield is too generic and all that. Eight, eight million because of kids. Some people say one billion. You know what? Don't be surprised. You, you never know. Uh, sometimes these animated movies, they sneak up on you. They have legs. Families need something to distract their little iPad kid with something. And if Garfield's the only family-friendly movie out there, they're going to do it. Yeah, see, that's like the real 300 million I think would be nice. 190 that someone just said that is probably what it'll end up doing again not trying to be rude offensive just trying to give my honest opinion in there but if it surprises and it does good i'll eat my lasagna garfield words up let's keep moving on here all right oh ballerina i'm curious about this one so this is the john wick spinoff uh and it's gonna be uh 
uh, I think we saw it. Was it in John Wick three or two? Oh, I just a so probably just uh, John Wick spinoff. Uh, and it has stars Ana de Armos, and it's just going to be showing you like this society of ballerinas that were trained to be assassins in the John Wick world. That for sure could be good, but I could also see this going super generic. Uh, this isn't something that interesting. Like I like you know that Beekeeper movie with Jason Statham coming out next week. That's trying to be like a John Wick movie where it's like, oh, he's a beekeeper. Beekeeper, the society of secret assassins and all that. Oh, like, okay. You're trying to build out your own John Wick. Okay. You're trying to build your own world of assassins and lore and gold and casinos. John Wick actually pulled it off in a way that was interesting, mainly do a lot to the action scenes. Ana de Armos, I think, is a great actress. So I think she could pull that off. It's going to be about the action scenes and the story. I don't need it to connect that much to John Wick or anything like that. I would definitely want like the hotel to be part of it. Maybe introduce other parts of the world we didn't know about. Like we just already didn't know about these ballerinas, but we know there's other different kind of societies of this. It's just interesting to see um that this is how like they were raised. So, yeah, I'll I'll check it out. But uh I I could easily see this turning into a generic action movie that it's like oh, there's just nothing new here it's yeah it's the john wick world but they didn't they didn't really pull it off i don't know we'll see though we shall see inside out two baby i think this is the first one i can confidently say probably hitting a billion and it, it's finally about time uh freaking uh pixar has another billion dollar hit and uh, pixar has been on this downward slope unfortunately thanks to a lot of bad disney decisions where they had to suffer through Disney putting a lot of their movies just on streaming, uh, right? They did it to Soul, Turning Red, Luca. What was another movie? I think they did it to another one. I can't think of it right now. But it trained the audience to go, oh, if I want to see a Pixar movie, it's just going to be on Disney+. Plus. I don't have to go to the theater. And then thankfully, Elemental, which came out last year, broke that. It was a flop for like the first couple weeks. But then people were like, no, it's a good movie. It's a Pixar movie. It's in theaters. Go see it. It's not on Disney+. Plus. People went to the theater enough. That Elemental turned out to be a hit. It actually made some money, and it was a good, uh, it was a good bag for Pixar and a good win for them. The way the internet reacted when Inside Out Two came out, it became the most viewed trailer for a Pixar movie. Uh, so it broke that record. Uh, people really remember Inside Out being good. I think when people think about like the last really memorable or hit pixar movie they probably think inside out that's what i would think like i know soul was great and i i like luca uh but i don't think people see those as like giant hits or see those as like the last best i feel like this was the last movie the first inside out was the last time everybody was like pixar woo you know we remember crying in that theater bing bong bing bong and now with the introduction of new emotions uh you you got riley growing up you're curious about how they're gonna handle puberty you know and stuff like that i was like well, what they're gonna do here how much are you gonna tiptoe that line uh and it's also been like what seven eight years since the last movie a lot of kids have grown up it's kind of like the toy story 3 effect i remember i saw toy story 3 when i was about to go to college so it was like very connecting with me and a lot of kids who saw inside out years ago are now about to go through puberty it's going to be very connecting for them um so yeah i feel like confidently this will be the one that most likely will probably hit a billion. Uh, that's what I think. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's so I have this is my chat. Why are chats depressing? I'm not even going to read that out loud, but you can read it for yourself. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, but yeah, th th right. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to put that on screen. This right here. Where is it? 800 mil at the lowest, in my opinion. I agree. I think it's going to be a billion dollar. I, this is like the only one like I'm super confident in. But at the lowest, you're right. 800 million is I would say. It, it's just going to be a, a good one. And they probably are going to be trying to do like Inside Out 3. You know, just do it that. And when, then we'll get to Inside Out 5 when she's in the nursing home. That's going to be some wild emotions right there. Constipation is emotion? You don't know? <laughs> Bad Boys 4. I forgot this movie's being released this year. Look. Bad Boys 3 ended up being a surprise to me. I don't know about y'all, but if, if if you saw uh Bad Boys 3, maybe you were a little shocked. It, it didn't have the feeling, the Michael Bay vision and explosion and gritty feel that the first two had, but I was fully expecting 
my bad boys three to be trash. And I walked out going, I I actually like that. That was actually enjoyable. It was pretty good. It, it, it's Will Smith trying to build basically his own Fast and Furious if, is what it feels like. And they set up enough there where I'm like, all right, continue on. We'll see where it goes. So I'm not expecting great things. Uh, in fact, where's the like Rotten Tomato score right now for Bad Boys 3? Bad Boys 3. And they wasted the title Bad Boys for Life on the third movie. They, they this, this one should have been called Bad Boys for Life. But they didn't think they'd get to four. See, it did decently. It, it 76 and 90. Yeah, audiences loved it. It it, it did decently. Um, it, if this one's also that good, I, I'd say it also hits the 70 mark. The 70 mark is probably where it'll end up being. It, it could be good. It could be good. I'm willing to check it out, but we'll see, man. They could take it real ridiculous real fast. Bike riders. Um, I don't have much thought. To me, this looks like a like a dark and gritty wild hogs. Y'all remember wild hogs, that Disney movie. I liked wild hogs. That was a good one. John Travolta in them, a quiet place. Day one. Now that's, this one's going to be a hit. This one's going to be good. I don't think it'll be a Billy hit, but this won't be good. So this one, Oh, geez, Louise, uh, a quiet place. Day one. Unfortunately, John Krasinski not coming back to direct, but that's okay. We, we were letting him go do if, and, uh, okay. That, that's just not going to work. And, uh, with this one, it's going to be showing us the first day of the alien invasion, right? And I'm liking that because it's not going to be set in a small town like the last couple were. This is going to be set in a city. So we're going to see something almost kind of like, you know, with a very populated area and how crazy everything went when the aliens show up. Don't you think about how loud a city like New York or something like that is. Cars beeping, horns honking, uh, there's advertisements, music, all that kind of stuff. Oh, them aliens going to go crazy on this. This is going to be such an exciting. And this, isn't that always kind of like one of the funnest things to see is like how the invasion starts. Who are the smartest ones to quickly defend themselves, find out what's going on, prepare yourselves. I, I always love that about like apocalyptic invasion movies is seeing how people start protecting themselves, whether they turn on family, turn on friends, whether strangers work each other, whether they don't. The cast, I'm also loving. Alex Wolf, I think, is a great one. Lupita Nyong'o. Uh, yeah, th this, I feel, is going to be really fun. I think it's going to be great. I'm I'm predicting 90 on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's going to be good. And I haven't even seen a single thing about it. It's just like, this is an easy movie to do. Like, it's going to be really hard for you to mess this up. If you mess this up, so something was off with you, my friend. Something was off with you. All right. Don't know much about that. Uh, let's see here. The untitled Scarlett Johansson, Channing Tatum movie. Good. I know some of y'all care about Twister. I never even seen the original. So unfortunately, I don't have much to comment on that. But uh, you're getting a new Twister movie. So that's cool. Uh, we talked about Deadpool 3. The Borderlands movie. Now, video game movies, they hot. They hot right now, right? We just saw Five Nights at Freddy's was the highest grossing horror movie of last year, and it was a video game movie. That means studios are going to start putting in a lot more effort into bringing out these video game properties because I think as comic book movies start to die down or become less interesting to the general audience, video game movies are going to go up, not just for general audiences, but just to appeal to that niche of large fan bases out there because Five Nights at Freddy's proved the fan base is there. You just got to make a movie for them. Borderlands, I think, was a popular game. I don't know how big the fan base is now. I unfortunately never played it, but there's been so much behind the scenes drama with this movie. And I, I hate to be the Debbie Downer. I feel like this is going to be not only a, a, a financial flop, I think it's going to be a critical flop. It's being directed by Eli Roth, who kind of just proved himself with the Thanksgiving movie that he can do something fun. Uh, it's got an interesting cast of characters. You got Kevin Hart in there, Jamie Lee Curtis, Jack Black does the voice of one of like the robots in there. So it's got some star power, but we kept hearing that they did so many reshoots. They had to rewrite the script. Test screenings weren't great. Um, who knows? Those test screenings could have been horrible because they showed it to people who didn't know the video game. Again, like Five Nights at Freddy's, the Super Mario movie, and maybe even the Sonic movies prove if you just make a movie where you please the fans and that fan base is big enough, who cares what the critics score say? Because the fans are happy. General audiences aren't happy because they're just not familiar with the property. So why why appeal to them if they're if they're not even uh, the market for it? You know, so we'll see. But I just don't know if Borderlands is big enough to uh, to make a splash. You know, see, I, I have one person in here saying I love Borderlands. Uh, I'm, I hope the movie you enjoy it, man. And saying uh, this movie is cooked. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> flippity flip flop. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Jack Black in another video game movie, man. He is the king of video game movies. We'll see what he does with the Minecraft movie. All right. The untitled alien movie. Yeah. I talk about that a lot in the upcoming, uh, upcoming horror movie video. I, I hope it does good. I, uh, I'm curious about the box office potential. How much did Alien Covenant make? That's the last uh, one we got. Alien Covenant was like, oh, that was not good. That's not great. Oh, man, Prometheus made 400. People were clamoring for some Alien back then. Prometheus looks like it, it made 400 out at one point, and then that cut in half for the sequel. Uh, I could see why maybe Disney didn't want to continue Ridley Scott's trilogy. Although I would have loved to have seen him finish that story he was making. Um, I don't think we should expect big numbers from Alien, uh, unfortunately, because there was a reason a movie like Prey went to Hulu just because they saw the Predator franchise was not making money at the box office. It's like we it, it just be a, a well-known property we can exploit to get numbers at our streaming service. And that's what they were going to do with this Alien movie till they saw Prey was getting all this love, all this attention, good reviews. If they released Prey in theaters, it probably would have made some decent money through word of mouth. I'm hoping that happens here because I like Fed Alvarez. I think he's going to bring the horror back to the Alien franchise. It's going back to a simple premise, so you don't really need to know anything about the previous movies. We'll just see how the trailers go. The trailers really will determine how big. But uh, 300 million would be a big win, I think. 300 million would be nice for this. If not 200 million, I think it would be the bare minimum of what they're hoping for. Uh, I don't know what that is. Craven the Hunter, we talked about Beetlejuice, too. <laughs> I'll talk about this in the horror video. I wish I was the Beetlejuice fan, guys. I told y'all. I just didn't connect with the original Beetlejuice. I'm glad if you're excited for it. I'm mainly going to want to watch it for Jenna Ortega because I, I love supporting her and I think she's great. Uh, I have to watch that first Beetlejuice movie again because, like I said, I watched it as a kid and I was just kind of like, okay, that was something. Very colorful. I liked the green hair, Michael Keaton. Uh, but I know people get mad when I'm not like, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh. You know, let's see. Transformers 1, baby. Here we go. Animated movies are all the hit right now, right? But they, they don't make what you think. They get a lot of internet praise, but they don't. What are like, uh, let me see. Across the Spider-Verse box office. Because that's right now like, oh, six, nine. okay, that's good. That's a big jump from what the first movie made. I didn't even know that six. Okay, from the first movie, which made 384. Okay, Beyond could probably hit a billion, hopefully. But like, you look at something like TMNT that a lot of people loved. Uh, you know, people were surprised. They came out of that movie going, whoa, but the box office was not amazing for it. 180, that's like, I'm glad they greenlit the sequel and that we're going to get it. But like, it's just people who have that stigma of animates just for kids. Animates just for kids. This Transformer movie has the potential, y'all. It has the potential to be something big. So they got Chris Hemsworth in there, who's going to be the voice, I think, of Optimus Prime, Brian Terry Henry, Scarlett Johansson, Keegan-Michael Key, who's doing uh, Bumblebee. And their idea for this movie is to show you Cybertron. We're finally going to have a movie entirely set on Cybertron. And they said they went animated because it would have been way too expensive to do a live action. They just couldn't afford it. So it's the idea of the first, like, 10 minutes of Bumblebee, right? But in animated form, which... In a weird way, it's already animated, right? But CG animation, whatever. I guess that's harder. This could be good. The, 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 the movie's going to start off with Optimus Prime and Megatron as friends, and we're going to see a trilogy of how they part ways. The uh, Autobots and Decepticons came to be, probably landing on Earth, starting that war. It has the makings to be very good, you know? And I'm also curious about the animation design because animated movies now do not look like what they used to. Look at Across the Spider-Verse. Look at TMNT. They go stylized. They try to be different. Imagining the Cybertron world, these transforming robots, the transforming scenes, this could be a very beautiful movie. So I unfortunately think this will not perform that well at the box office, given the history that you have to prove that you're a good movie. And then your second movie will be the box office hit, just like Spider-Verse. Not a lot of people saw the first Spider-Verse. It was kind of a low box office for what they were anticipating. Second movie proved that you can double that if you make a good movie. Uh, TMNT, I think, is going to have the same effect. This first movie didn't do great, but when that second TMNT movie and they show Shredder and all this stuff, it's going to be a hit. Um, so that's what I think. It, it, it could probably be a good movie, but I don't think it's going to make that much money as much as we'd open. I mean, even look at uh, Rise of the Beast. It didn't make that Transformers money like it used to. Uh, so we'll see. We shall see, my friends. We'll see how that one comes out. 
Saw X. I'll talk about that in the horror video, but I am curious about this, uh, how that goes. We just talked about Joker. I talk about Smile 2 in the horror video. Uh, let's see. Venom 3, we talked about it. The red one. So this one's going straight to streaming. Gee, I keep doing that every time, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. So this one's going straight to streaming. It's the Dwayne Johnson Christmas movie. I think it's going to Amazon. And uh, I don't know what to think about it. Uh, obviously, we can't determine box office uh, numbers, but we have Chris Evans and The Rock. I think The Rock is supposed to be playing like the bodyguard of Santa Claus. And Santa Claus in this movie is being played by uh, J.K. Simmons, which is pretty funny. Uh, I already like the, the design look for this Santa Claus, looking pretty swagged out. You know, Dwayne Johnson has changed his tune. This might be the last kind of like corny or just dumb action movie from Dwayne. Because I don't know if you guys saw The Rock. Uh, let's see, The Rock A24. Um, you know, he's making the A24 movie about uh, an MMA fighter. It's supposed to be like a real tragic story and all that. But um, he he said here uh, on why he's doing this movie. He's like, I'm at a point in my career where I want more. And I don't mean I want more box office. I mean, I want more humanity. And and that is why Ben Safety is the perfect collaborative hungry partner for me. The Rock's basically saying. I've done my kid movies, which was his Disney era when he did Game Plan, Tooth Fairy. I've done my action movie phase. I tried doing my superhero movie phase. Didn't work out. It's time to try and earn that Oscar. So this could be the last corny fun. Maybe this and Jumanji 3, because he'll probably still end up doing that. And then we're going to see The Rock attempt to earn his Oscar, which, hey, I hope that goes good for him. It'd be great to see him actually prove that and accomplish this goal. He's a hardworking man. Um, but this, I, I don't know what to make of it. Like I said, it's a streaming movie, so no point even determining the box office of it. Uh, this will probably be like a 40, 50%. It could, it could easily be a 70 if it's wholesome fun, but you know, the bodyguard of Santa Claus. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Gladiator 2. A lot of people looking forward to Gladiator 2. Uh, I don't know what to make of it because <laughs> I, I have to watch Gladiator again. That was one I saw with my dad when I was like freaking, what, seven or something. I, I don't remember anything other than, are you not entertained? That was that was this movie, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm making it up. But there's a cool cast in there. Pedro Pascal. A uh, lot of good people in it. I have no idea. This is see, this is one where uh, my own bias of because I'm not interested, that interested in it. I think the whole world won't be interested because everybody thinks like me, right? I'm the genius. I'm the main character of this universe. That's not the case. This could actually be a hit. A lot of people might have been waiting for a gladiator sequel. So we'll see, my friends. Uh, I, I don't know what to make of that one. I don't know what to make of that one. All right. Wicked. That's the. <laughs> The Ariana Grande musical movie. Uh, we'll see. A lot, a lot of Ariana Grande fans, you know. And she's with SpongeBob now. That helps stuff out too. So that could be something. I remember seeing the set photos of it, and I was like, whoa, that's a that's an interesting looking set. Ariana's definitely got them lungs. The untitled karate kid movie. So I had that movie on my most anticipated list of this year. It was kind of like a surprise probably to y'all because it's like, Chris, you really excited for a Karate Kid movie? Yes, I am, man. When you tell me I'm going to get Jackie Chan and the OG Karate Kid in there, why wouldn't you be? If you're a fan of these movies, you'll want to see it. But I know full well, this could be a 2010% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's be honest with ourselves. Like, It's really hard to replicate the magic of that Karate Kid. I think the closest thing to it is that first season of Cobra Kai. If you still have not seen Cobra Kai, watch that first season. It is it is the closest to recapturing the magic and charm of the original first Karate Kid movie. They do a really good job with that. Solo Mighty Lenya, Blue Beetles in it. Um, Now I'm like, well, how does this even connect to the Cobra Kai universe? How do you make Jackie Chan and, and Ralph Macho uh, connect with each other? Are they still going with the plot of having a kid be the one to train an adult? Uh, you know, because that that's what the rumored plot is, which I don't mind. But I saw a lot of people like that's kind of stupid. It's different. Um, I'm just I'm just curious. I want to see this pan out. I want to see this be good. Uh, but I I know this could be a both flop financially and flop critically. I am prepared for that. I'm fully aware. But I'm gonna have my hopes kind of up. Sonic Three, baby. I don't know if I'm ready to call this one a billion dollar hit. I don't know if it'll be a billion. But it'll get up there. So Sonic 2 uh, at the box office made $600 million? 
Oh, Sonic 2 made 400. Okay. So the first movie made 306 million. And the second movie it made four. So it went up 100 million. I could see with Shadow in there, Shadow is a very recognizable, cool character, okay? Whether you're a Sonic fan or not, you know who Shadow is and you know he's a badass. Depending on who you get to voice Shadow will be a big determining factor on the hype of this movie. I'm still waiting to see who is voicing Shadow. But if you get the right person to voice Shadow, and you give us a badass trailer of Shadow, the Black Hedgehog, against Blue Boy Sonic fighting each other, you have a $600 million movie on your hands, and that's a big win. Uh, I'm curious about this. No idea if Jim Carrey's returning, just unfortunately because you know he's, he's saying he's retiring, so maybe he's done. And they did, quote-unquote, kill him at the end of the last movie, but you know they didn't find his body, so in Hollywood terms, that means he could still be out there, which he most likely is. Um... Unfortunately, it's probably still going to get bad reviews just because if you're not a fan, if, if if you're a critic watching this movie and you have no idea of the history of who's, who Shadow is, what Sonic is, all the video game-isms they throw in there, because I think that's what Sonic 2 suffered from, unfortunately. It didn't get good reviews. Oh, okay, it got decent. Uh, it, like, that's kind of low for me. I thought Sonic 2 was, like, really fun, and they meshed well together, the video game stuff, with, like, this, this lame trope of we're in the real world and real people and there's a wedding going on. But the Knuckles stuff in there was awesome. The big Eggman robot fight scene. Sonic going super Sonic. Like, I thought they did a lot of the video game stuff pretty cool. And I, I know Jeff Fowler is going to bring it with here. Just, hey, you give Shadow that gun. Now we talking $800 million, buddy. Well, I, I think it'll be good. But I think it'll still probably get bad reviews just because it's going it's to lean for the, for the video game fans. And that's fine. It'll still make its money. It'll make its money. Hopefully. Mufasa the Lion King. I don't know, y'all. I definitely feel there is like a a, a, a a disdain for Disney right now. I just feel like not, and, and don't hit me with, oh, it's because they went woke. It's because they went woke, Chris. Disney just isn't making magical movies. You remember Disney for being the magic movie hitter. And the movie Wish, from what I've heard, people were not that fond of it. People were not loving it. Now, the last Lion King movie, the live action one, it hit a billion. But that's because it's the freaking Lion King, buddy. That that's like one of the most iconic. That's the movie. That's the movie. That's the movie you show as a kid to give them their first cry. You go, oh, so you want to talk bad to me? Come and put on the Lion King. Make them cry harder than you spanking him. I'll guarantee you that. So with this next movie, it's 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 an original idea, which I do like. It's it's going back, and it's going to be, I think, Simba telling the. Oh no, it's uh the monkey. I forget the monkey's name. Uh, but it's the monkey telling the kids of Simba the story of Mufasa. And so we're going to be a prequel. We're going to see how he became king, which I don't think is a movie that's been done. I know there's some Lion King sequels, but I don't think that was ever part of those sequels. Um, so I like that we're moving away from Disney remakes and trying to go into original storytelling. Barry Jenkins, also a uh, really good director. Uh, Moonlight, I think, was what he did. And so I don't know if this will make a Billy, though. I don't know if this will make a Billy. The monkey, you know, the, mon the the one that like holds the monkey. <laughs> Someone's asking me the monkey. Isn't he a monkey or you know a primate? What's what was that? Come on, tell me the name. Then I'm sorry, I just forgot. Um, but yeah, so I don't I don't know. I think this will be like a six hundred million dollar movie, which is probably still really good for for Disney and it'll make their money back. But people saw that Lion King movie, baboon. Thank you, or uh, Rafki. Rafiki, baboon, Rafiki. Okay, Rafiki. Um, people saw that Lion King movie, and the biggest complaint is just the emotions don't hit the same because you just some animals just don't have that expression. You know, a lot of these animals were just built to have an angry or a dead face, right? Uh, I mean, my Chihuahua has it all the time, so that's gonna hold it back. I think definitely you're not gonna have that big emotional factor and whatnot. So I, I don't think this will be a billion like the last Lion King movie, but we'll see. And then ending things off here, Nosferatu. This is also a horror movie I talk about. Robert Eggers, I think, is mainly what's carrying this for me. I really liked what he did with the Northman. Um, you know, Nosferatu is obviously a famous character. Most of us know him from SpongeBob. Then who was turning off the lights? Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 literally 
no joke, all I know about Nosferatu is the SpongeBob reference from the Hash Slinging Slasher episode. Great episode. But <laughs> other than that, this one will probably get very well reviewed. I don't know how it'll do box office wise because, uh, it, 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 you know, these are these are made for the film bros. You know, the one story character. It's hard to mass market them, but it's a it's a Christmas release. Maybe this is something you want to see with your family. Bill Skarsgård's also playing uh, the vampire or the Nosferatu, and so could be pretty good. Could be pretty good. All right, that so that's my thoughts. Let me go into some of these super chatties now and get your guys' opinions on what we were just talking about. All right, let's go into this. So we got thoughts on the upcoming Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty horror movies. Uh, okay, I would bring up the Cinderella one again, but the last time I did it, the stream got hit with a with an adult warning because it's a very graphic photo. But yes, the Cinderella movie, you can look it up on your own. Uh, they have it already. The fairy godmother has like a mutilated face. I showed it on screen and, Dis and YouTube was like, no, 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 Chris, you cannot do that. Um... I didn't know the Sleeping Beauty horror movie was a thing. Look, I'm down to watch all of them, but they just always feel so unoriginal and uncreative. I'm waiting for the one that'll be a hit. And you know what? I, I hate to say it, but Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, that comes out this March. I think they just revealed the release date on there. I am excited for that. They have a million-dollar budget now. And although they didn't do a great job with the $100,000 movie, now they got prosthetics. They got other Winnie the Pooh characters. It's going to be focusing on Christopher Robin, so they're going to be playing onto the Winnie Pooh lore. That one might actually be fun, bad, where the first one was just bad, <laughs> in my opinion. My opinion. Okay, but we'll, we'll, we'll go on. Mr. Bean coming back to uh, for season four. I saw that, the cartoon thingy. Uh, Mr. Bean cartoon. That's nice. I never watched the cartoons, but I did as a kid watch the Mr. Bean shorts. Uh, those were always nice. I, I love uh, Roman Atkins. Is that, that's the name, right? Uh that's cool for the people who watch it. I just, I don't know if the cartoon would have the same magic of the live action stuff. I love, I love the live action shorts of Mr. Bean. They were just funny little things. Uh, Valentina sends a dollar. Awesome. Chris, get reveal this year. Love you, man. Maybe if I hit a million subscribers, it's a level seven. Yeah, I'll tell you that. All right. Uh, 499 Mario Pena. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. I'm waiting for Deadpool 3. And how is your day been? Oh, man, I think a lot of us are waiting for Deadpool 3. Day's been pretty good, man. Like I said, I went to the gym, so I feel like I got a pump. Am I looking like Sam Solik yet, guys? No, not yet. Okay. Um, but other than that, yeah, man, it's been a good day in Deadpool 3. Oh, it's going to be a hit, right? If it turns out being the worst comic book movie of the year, man, don't even give me another comic book movie, man, because that, that was it. That's like literally the only comic book movie right now I'm anticipating other than like Spider-Man 4. And beyond the Spider-Verse. Okay. Hey, 3C, if you have the chance, I would appreciate it if you see the video uh, I made. It's a YouTube rewind about 23 animated movies. Okay, Dial Pickle. I will keep that in mind, my friend. I would check it out here, but just because I don't know if it'll get copyrighted or not. Don't want the live stream to get taken down. But Dial Pickle, I will remember that, and I'll check that out. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh uh, Kelly says, sup, Chris, currently at work right now, wishing you a jolly happy new year. I'm really excited to see Craven the Hunter this year, regardless of what people say. Hey, man, I'm glad you're sticking to it. And you're not the only one. I know when I gave my honest opinion about Craven and when the trailer came out, I was like, I just, and the rated R is the only thing carrying it for me. But everyone else was like, Chris, you're crazy. Is it, this looks action packed. This looks awesome. It could be a hit. And I'm like, man, I'm glad you guys are seeing it. But I, to me, I'm just, I'm hesitant, man. Morbius really hurt me with Sony, man. That's what made me go. What you doing, Sonny? What you doing? But hey, happy new year to you too. And I do hope Craven is good. I do not want the movie to be bad. I want it to be good. Uh, it's like the Joker meeting young Bruce, but it's with Venom meeting young Peter. Oh, yeah. That's a thing right there. See, like, I would love a Joker movie where we get Joker fighting Batman, but the entire movie is told through the perspective of the Joker. Why not, you know? I doubt we'll ever get that because by the time that Batman, which young Bruce from the first Joker movie grows up to be Batman, Walking Phoenix and Joker will be really old. It's like, would that be an exciting movie? Who knows? They don't need to like fight and fight combat. But like to me, they have not made Walking Phoenix's Joker an intelligent Joker. I do not feel he has the mind power to go up against a Batman yet. He definitely can start a riot in a chaos. That's what we saw at the end of the first Joker. But I don't think he has like that mind trickery yet, like uh, like we would expect from Joker. Uh, Chris, considering what we learned with the insomniac situation, what direction would you like to see the Spider-Man two DLC go? 
Um, so if it's true what they're saying, you know, I guess leaning into the Venom stuff, you know, that would set us up nicely. Uh, obviously, can't like it sucks because you can't do too much with like Peter Parker. So a lot of the DLC will have to do with like Miles, which I'm not saying is bad. I was just hoping they'd give Miles another game. I thought they'd make Miles Morales too, but they didn't. And they have a great reason now that Miles that Peter is retired, so Miles can just do his own thing. Uh, I'm not sure because now that I we heard that they're coming with the Venom game, well, I just want them to save all the the carnage setup into that game. I don't want that to be a DLC. I want that to be part of Venom's whole game. You know what I'm saying? I guess it could be introducing us to who Venom will be because it doesn't look like it's going to be Harry. They got to choose Eddie. Please do more spoiler reviews. Also, ending explains again videos, please. Ah, uh, my ending explain days are over. That that's a great way to like start gaining views and earn attention. I just felt like they were like nothing against like the people who do ending explains because there's people who do them way better than me. Uh, I don't even know if Halevy Spoilers does ending explains anymore. He probably still does, but like on but but he goes really in detail. Paul is a good guy. As much as I hate him, Paul is a good guy at doing that. And I don't know. I it, like early on in my car YouTube career, it was just a good way to get some attention on my channel, get some views. But I just felt like I could be more creative than that. Uh, spoiler reviews, yeah. Uh, I, I could think about it. I, I was thinking that's like what the clips channel is for. Like I could do a spoiler review for Night Swim on there, give you some of my thoughts on that. Um, but yeah, I, I'll definitely take that in consideration, my friend. Thank you. Okay, thoughts on the Echo series? Best MCU show? Does this also make Netflix Daredevil somewhat canon? Anyways, love the TVMA from... Okay. So yes, I got sent the Echo episodes. Uh, so I got the first three. I've only watched the first one right now. When I'm done with this live stream, I'll probably finish watching the other two episodes. Um, there's only five episodes in total, so I'll get a good idea of the show. I can't say too much because it's still under embargo. Uh, what I will say is like the first five minutes... So many people are going to be going to their remote like, did I put on the right show? Is, th is this Echo? What is going on right now? Remember this, okay? When you watch Echo, the first five minutes, you're going to go, what the heck is going on? What is this? Because <laughs> I know I was doing that. I was like, did Disney send me the wrong thing? And then it, it goes off from there. Other than that, match potential. Well, I'll say that. that. Like, I could say this because we've seen it from the trailers. Fight scenes, they hold up. The fight scenes is definitely carrying the show for me a lot. But I'll, I'll get more into it when the embargo lifts and I can give my thoughts on it. Okay. Hey, Chris, uh, with Scream 7 uh, director quitting, will the with, no, the with the project, will Scream 7 be pushed back till they find a new director or will the movie be canceled? See, that's the interesting thing because we know Scream 7 is happening. It's been greenlit by Spyglass. And then before all this drama happened where they let go of Melissa Barrera, then Jenna Ortega left, then the director decided to quit because of all the drama. Although we knew this movie was happening, they never set a release date. They never told us when it'll come out. We assumed they were probably trying to aim for October of this year or like sometime in the fall of this year. That ain't going to happen now. That is not going to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm still of the camp. They're canceling this movie. They're just going to silently not talk about it anymore. We'll try to see if the dust settles. No way they push forward. They're going to hold on to it for like maybe two years and then try and do something. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely delayed. Uh, we're not seeing the movie this year. I doubt it. We're probably seeing it come 2025 if they push forward, which I'd be so surprised if they do. All right. Uh, please make more Indian Explain videos. Oh, man. Maybe for the really complicated stuff, but I don't know. Ending explain videos for me ended up me being just telling you what happens in the movie. And I know some people like that, but it just felt like I was being lazy with the content. And that's like getting a lot of views for something that's not that creative to do. And I, I don't want to feel happy what I make. So I don't know. I, I think about it. I think about it. But thank you for letting me know. Uh, Super sticker. Thank you, Russell Fields. Uh, I want to make a PG-13. Uh uh film animals of the 80s mm. you know I, yeah that would be fine that that'd be cool man I, I, <laughs> I don't know what i'm supposed to say i support you i support you my friend i'm not gonna lie i'm actually pretty excited to see some of the thick monkey cheeks on the big screen hey man that's gonna be a lot of fun that movie godzilla x kong uh i'm curious to see how they implement the little kong in there in terms of like they send him up to you know the next movie because you know they want to make a godzilla and Kong 3. Why not? You already did two? Go for three. Send in a big bad. Are we going to have a time skip for the third one? And that Kong is now maybe like what, how old Kong was in Skull Island, a little smaller and things like that. 
That'd be cool. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that movie turns out, man. Maybe we can get a little Godzilla in there. Little Godzilla would be nice. Hey, Chris, I'm a massive fan of yours from Australia. I have a question. When do you expect to see a trailer for the new Winnie the Pooh sequel? Oh, they actually mentioned, the Twitter account mentioned, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 trailer. And uh, end of January. End of January. And you know I'm going to be talking about it. I want to see this trailer. All right. You the man, Chris. No, you the man, Blake. Thank you so much for the support, man. That means a lot. Uh, hey, how come you don't focus on old classics? Um, if you want me to be like super honest, they just wouldn't get views, my friend, unfortunately. And YouTube algorithm will punish you if you release videos that just don't do well. They'll be like, oh, this guy had two videos that underperformed. His next video, don't need to push it out and whatnot since people aren't watching it anymore. Let his channel die. I'm sure there's other channels where they do focus on old classic movies, and they're probably much smarter video essay people than me, and I'm happy for them. Um, I tend, I just tend to look forward to the big upcoming movies, talk about those, because that seems what my channel has kind of been built on. But, hey, I respect the old classics. I love a lot of the old classics. And sometimes when we get a remake or sequel to an old classic, I'll bring up that old classic and sometimes do an old review on them. But for the most of the time, it's just, unfortunately, I just would not get enough views, and those videos would take a lot of time, effort, and you know, that's just the case of the game. That's YouTube for you. But uh, I do respect the classics, my friend. I do respect the classics. Love your videos. I love you, T. Hanks. Thank you so much for the support there. Thoughts on What If Season 2? I haven't even watched it. I haven't even picked it up. My that's how, like, it's gotten with Marvel, buddy. I I've been seeing a lot of praise, though. Uh, enough to where I'm like, all right, maybe I need to give some of these episodes a chance. But I wasn't even that big on the first What If. My biggest thing I, I disliked about What If is they made it an interconnected story. Why did they do that? Why does everything have to be like replicating the Avenger formula of like thing after thing, thing, thing leading up to the big movie thing after thing? Like I was really hoping what if was just, you know, uh, anthology. Every episode self-contained doesn't have to connect, but they decided not to do that. Now, again, like I said, though, I've seen a lot of people praise season two saying it's way better than the first season. And that's made me interested to check it out. But as of right now, my friend have have not wanted to, unfortunately, have not wanted to. Deadpool 3, 1 billion. I'm hoping for it, man. Uh, the only reason I'm saying no is because comic book movies just aren't hitting like they used to, but it's going to hit a lot of money. 1 billion, if the views, if the reviews turn out good, it's hitting that billion. It's hitting that billion. You got Wolverine and Deadpool in there, man. But if it gets bad reviews, we're looking at an 800, 700 movie, which is still awesome. Which is still awesome. Uh, What will happen if Deadpool 3 sucks or flops? Oh, then everybody should panic. Kevin Fagoli is going to be on that phone and being like, all right, I need you to cancel Wonder Man. I need you to cancel this. I need you to stop that. They have to scale back. They, if if movie like Deadpool and Wolverine flops somehow, or, or just like severely underperforms, where it makes like 400 million, funeral of the comic book movie universe is tomorrow, my friends, unfortunately. Don't even bother trying to make, make Avengers 5, or, you know, just skip straight to Secret Wars at this point. It, it's going to be bad. It's going to be letting us know it's over. It's Joe over, my friends. But hopefully that doesn't happen. I don't see that happening. We'll see. All right. Which movie didn't need a sequel? Mm, that's, a, that's a good one right there. Movies that didn't need a sequel. I know they made one for like American Psycho with Mila Kunis. I, I saw that movie thinking it would be a lot like, you know, the Patrick Bateman, uh, Christian Bale one. <laughs> uh, you know, Jingle All the Way got a sequel with Larry the Cable Guy. They made the the that Ace Ventura spinoff. Was it Ace Ventura Jr.? I love the Ace Ventura franchise, but they made Ace Ventura Jr. <laughs> I never even saw it, man. But I saw that and I was like, come on now. Come on now. I'd love to see some of the regular chat's opinion on this. See, some people are saying Joker 2. Joker 2. What movie do you guys think didn't need a sequel there, guys? I, I want to know. Uh, the oh the okay y'all are gonna hate me though <laughs> this is gonna ruin my credibility I like Jamie Kennedy's The Mask I I like The Mask too <laughs> it's probably because I saw it as a kid it's definitely nowhere nowhere near as good as the first mask the Jim Carrey mask like the Jim Carrey mask is up here this one is down here I I like it <laughs> you're too good to be true can't take my eyes off of you. Yeah, they sing that song in there. I, I like it, but I, I get it. I get it. It's that one. Toy Story 4, yeah, they should have ended it. 
at uh at toy story 3 in my opinion that's just like a good little send off with it uh, <laughs> let's see all the jaw sequels that's probably true yeah zoolander 2 don't know why they did that one just too late and the premise was not good premise was not good for that sequel uh i mean they needed to conclude the trilogy someone said halloween ends that's why i uh, know it's uh, cars indy 5 I, I was rooting for it because I wanted them to end off on a high note, but in my opinion, they ended off on a worse note. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, maybe that shouldn't have happened. Terminate, you know, I'll say Terminator after the third one because I do like the third one. I think the, the Terminator trilogy right there is great. From there, you should not keep trying to make a sequel to the second movie because every Terminator movie after the third one was just trying to jump off the success of the second movie. Didn't work. Salvation, eh. And then you had Genesis, eh. Then you had Dark Fate. I enjoy, but at the end of the day, it's still, eh. Nothing has come close. Um, so, yeah, they just need to start over with that. They need to pull a Prey slash new Alien Romulus with that. Let's see. It's nice seeing... Oh, Jeepers Creepers 3 was just terrible, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh, good stuff. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, good, good, good. Hang on, guys. Let me, let me, let me... Get someone down here who's making a mess. All right, please in time out. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's continue on. But it's good to hear your, your guys' opinions there. All right, where were we? Uh, 3C Films, Godzilla Minus One was great. Godzilla got CR. Oh, he got that CR. That credit report? That, that, that cereal raisin brand? He got that cereal raisin bread. No, that's a great movie. I loved it. Favorites, of, one of the favorites of last year. Any Clover, Cloverfield sequel updates? No, we haven't. I think the Hollywood strike kind of ruined a lot of upcoming movies, whether they're still happening or not. There's like so many films I remember talking about before the Hollywood strike, and then after it, you're just kind of like, man, what happens now? What, what's going on next? You know? Uh, but it's coming. You know, and I think Matt Reeves is even a producer on it this time, which is exciting because he was, you know, of the first one. But uh, I'm curious. It's also supposed to be like a direct sequel to the first movie. So it's not kind of like a in-universe story or that just uses their name like that Netflix movie. It's supposed to be about like what happened after that first Cloverfield movie. So we'll see. But no, nothing new that I know of as of right now. Jason uh, Griffith for Shadow. So who's that guy? I don't know who Jason Griffith is. Jason. Maybe after I see his face, I'll know. I, I oh, okay. I'm guessing he's an actual voice actor and stuff. Oh, that's great. Uh, unfortunately, though, the studios will not pick a traditional voice actor whose like job it is to actually do voice acting. They're gonna go with star power. They're gonna go with their Chris Pratt, their Idris Elba, their I don't know Chris Evans. You know, Chris Evans, for all we know, could honestly be the voice of Shadow. We don't know. That's who they're gonna go with. But it's it, it's nice to think you know someone like this could do it. I w I wish, but uh, I'm glad we got Colleen. Colleen is tails, but I think that was a budgetary thing. You know, they can't have everybody be behind the star power. Uh, let's see here. Are you excited for the boys season four? Oh yeah. Gen V was awesome. Boys has been nothing but great. Very excited for boys season four. I just hope they continue the magic. Uh, Hey Chris, what franchise has been gone? That's been gone. Do you want to see return? Ooh. Okay. This is another one for the chat. So start spewing out your suggestions here while I start thinking about, uh, my first one would be Nightmare on Elm Street, buddy. Nightmare on Elm Street is my favorite horror franchise. Right, let me see if I can pull you out. All right, Freddy Krueger, this boy. Oh, favorite. Oh, I love Ghostface. I love Chucky. Number one. Will always be my number one horror icon. I know it's hard to recapture the magic of what Robert England did. But I know there's an actor out there that can put their own spin on Freddy Krueger. And there's an imaginative director mind out there that would create awesome dream sequences and do some cool visual effects um i need the nightmare on elm street series back man i, I hope so hopefully they get that sorted out because you know we've been hearing rumors that the estate has been wanting to bring it back they just haven't done it um but that would be like my number one uh another one before i go in to see what the chat is saying uh it, oh they said it right here call me crazy i i know that Back to the Future trilogy is like some of the most perfect movies in existence, right? Back to the Future, the first one, favorite movie of all time. Like, literally watched that on repeat. Heck, it was on TV just the other day, and I was sitting there like, I love these movies, man. These movies good. Uh, and I know it's so scary. 
for today's Hollywood to touch, you know, something that beloved and you, you're afraid of what they'll put in it and stuff. But I just love that franchise. I, I know it's hard to try and get Michael Fox probably back in there, probably couldn't, you know, and Christopher Lloyd. I'm not saying you need to do the legacy stuff or treat it all that, but just reboot a new story in modern age, predict what will be in the future 30 years from now. I, I would love Back to the Future back, but I know it's probably never going to happen. That's that's just one that's just never going to be touched. All right, let's see here. Uh, you guys have the mask. Yeah, we were just talking about that. I would love another mask. You know, it's not going to be Jim Carrey, but an attempt. You know, I've even seen people say spin it to the other side because the mask comics that it's based from are very violent, very bloody. Uh, you could go almost horror or R-rated with the mask. That could be fun. Or you just get a new hot comedian now and put him in the mask, you know, see how that would go. Shrek, you, we need Shrek back, baby. I know we got the Puss in Boots franchise, but like you've been promising Shrek five for a while. We do need that back. Grownups. <sighs> I, I'm glad some people love the grownups though. Oh yeah. We need to see gremlins three. Yeah. That, that I'd love to see a gremlins three gremlins does need a return. I just wonder how they would handle it, you know, because Gremlins is like one of those franchises that rides the line of like horror, but also kind of family friendly, especially that first one. But if they go as wacky and fun as that second movie, I wouldn't mind that either. But we do definitely need Gremlins 3, man. Crazy. They made a Gremlins show, but not a not, not like a Gremlins movie. Halloween Town Disney. How have you not exploited Halloween Town for your Disney Plus series yet? You could do a new Disney Plus. No, actually, don't make it a Disney Plus series, please. I I hate what you're doing with the Santa Claus Disney Plus series. I watched that first season. It was, I have no interest to watch this second season you put out. I don't even know if it's good. You bring back Halloween Town, you make it a movie. Put it on that platform or something. Halloween Town needs to come back. Yes, I agree. Uh, scary? Yes! Now we talking. Sca bring back parody movies. I miss them. I still see clips of them on TikTok sometimes. You know, like... <laughs> Those movies are so funny, man. Those first three scary movies, they hold up. And you know what made them good is they weren't like basing them off pop culture references, making fun of celebrity or a current day thing and yelling out the word gat or riz or anything like that. Like they had actual jokes that made fun of movies. And that's what we need to go back to. Like, just have some fun with it. Like, it's okay to, like, make fun of the movies we love. I don't mind that. Those movies were good, but I, I don't know. I guess it's hard because it's always just cheap humor. I don't know if you, I don't know, bring back Ben 10. We just need a Ben 10 movie. Live action, big budget. Warner Brothers, you are, like, sitting on a gold mine if you are not making a Ben 10. You're losing out on potential fans because I'm telling you, them Ben 10 kids, they're growing up, they're getting old, they're stopping watching movies. Make this before those Ben 10 fans get a little too old. Um... I don't know if we need Harry Potter back and uh, heck it is coming back, you know, Warner Brothers, Disney Plus, but with a whole new cast rebooted, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Rises, guys, uh, TM, I mean, TMNT is back. Some of these franchises are currently running, guys. I, I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, yes, there we go. That's the last one I'll end it on. Killer Clowns. We need more Killer Clown stuff, buddy. How have there not been something Killer Clown related? Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Let's see what else we got going. Sandman movie. I need it, Chris. That would be good. You know, Netflix series was definitely enjoyable and fun. That would be good. Hey, Chris, uh, how do you think a return to Silent Hill would perform? I don't know. Because although we talk about video game movies right now being really a hit, is it too late for Silent Hill? I know there's a lot of fans of it, but are they big enough to check it out? This could perform like a typical Resident Evil movie in terms of box office, I think. Um... It could be all right. Unfortunately, I never even watched the first Silent Hill, and I'm not too familiar to the game. But it could be cool. It could be cool. Okay. Uh, we have something. $2. Appreciate it. For the super sticker. That means a lot. Thank you so much. What do you think of Aaron Paul as Shadow? That'd be great. I like Aaron Paul. Hey, yo, Sonic. Uh, <laughs> we got to get these rings, bitch. <laughs> Sorry. I'm... Family friendly. Family friendly. Aaron Paul would be cool. I like Aaron Paul. I just don't know if he has that star power. He definitely would have the Breaking Bad fan like me going in, and he can maybe have the voice for it, but I don't know if he's the star power the studio would look for. Okay. Uh, hey, 3C, big fan, got a question. I saw from a fan uh, from the normal chat, do you think that Sly Cooper will get a fifth or will get a fifth or a or like a game or a movie? If so, would you watch? 
Uh, yeah. I mean, I played some uh, the first Sly Cooper game back uh, uh, my PlayStation days and whatnot. It could be a fun world. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's enough Sly Cooper fans. I'd rather see a Crash Bandicoot movie if I'm being honest with you. If I'm being honest with you. But yeah, it could be some. Could be some. Thank you for support, man. Uh, have you watched the full season of C for Cobra Kai? The new one has it not has it come out yet? Don't don't lie to me, man. I'm trying to see. I've watched. I've kept. I'm up to date with Cobra Kai. Really loving it. It's starting to slightly wear out its welcome, where it's feeling a little soap opera y or a little convenient, and they're starting to do things where it's like, Ugh, you're really pushing it here with this karate premise. But I'm still on board, and I'm and I'm glad this next season will be its end. Not because I'm I want the show to end, but because. I feel like it's time, and 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 hopefully they can wrap it up in a good way. This is 50-50 Batman Nolan trilogy. Uh, uh, but best trilogy, superhero trilogy, is Captain America because the next uh, next song gets better. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's not good. Captain America would definitely be a good one. I don't know if we count the Sam Wilson ones as part of that. You know, maybe that's his own series and stuff like that. Yeah. Have you watched Rick and Morty season eight, baby? Uh, I'll be honest with you. And I know, like, uh, so like dumb of me to say and all that. I don't know when all the Rick and Morty stuff came out and the cancellation and the drama. I kind of lost interest to watch Rick and Morty. I haven't kept up with it. If it's good, I'll I'll check it out. But I used to be really into Rick and Morty, and I liked the episodes a lot. And then I don't know. I just I just dropped off. But I didn't. Uh, if it's good, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Okay. What about Violent Night Two? Love the video. Oh yeah, I want to see Violent Night Two. That's coming out, and you know they're going to expand the lore because we're going to find out who Mrs. Claus is and to see if she's as violent as uh, Mr. Claus was in this movie. It, I'm so curious how they expand that world. Do they have Santa Claus team up with other fairy tale creatures, the Tooth Fairy and all this stuff? I always think it's fun when they do that. Do we see what the North Pole looks like, what his elves look like? A lot of fun in there, and I hope we get another Home Alone 2 rated R scene because that was awesome. Love your videos. Love you, Olivia Rodrigo. Thank you for being one of my fans because I love your music. Get them back. I'm going to get them back. See, you guys, famous people watch me. All right. Frosty the Mexican Snowman says, I'm really excited for Joker 2. I'm, I'm curious for it for sure, and I am excited. I am excited. I want to see how that turns out. Uh, says again, we need a movie set in Cyberpunk 2077 universe. Now that would be cool. Just for the visuals alone, because the cyberpunk universe is filled. Story-wise, though, we bring Keanu Reeves, and you know what they do in there. Well, that's up to someone else to do. What did you think of Killers of the Flower Moon? <sighs> Unfortunately, I have not seen it yet. I know I'm supposed to. That was just a big commitment, and I could never find the time to sit down and watch the three hour and a half movie. I do want to see it though, because I love my boy Leo. I love Martin Scorsese. Uh, uh, definitely curious to check out that movie. I do want to see it. I am. I just uh, haven't had the time to sit down and actually watch it. A lot of stuff I got to watch, you know? So, unfortunately, I'm sorry, my friend, but I haven't seen it to give you my opinion. But I, I do want to see it. I do. Got to support my boy, Leo. What are your thoughts on the new Furiosa movie? So, really, the only drawback to it is, like, I just feel like the visuals aren't coming on par with the last Mad Max Fury Road, and I just thought the last Mad Max looked beautiful. And I know that movie has visual effect shots. I'm not saying, oh, they should have gone practical just like the last movie. I know that movie's filled with CGI and green screen, but it looks good. It looks seamless. I remember watching behind the scenes of what was green screen, what was fake, and I was like, that was fake? That was a CGI shot? I was blown away. And with Furiosa, I feel like, oh, I can, I can see that. Other than that, though, excited for Ron Taylor Joy, Chris Hemsworth. The story's probably going to be great. So, yeah, I, I should just stop complaining about that. Uh, Kingdom Hearts movie or show, yay or nay? You know, Kingdom Hearts was never something I got into playing. I never understood it. But I probably should have. I had friends who would like play it on the DS or the Game Boy and really got into it. I want to see it just how you explain all those Disney characters in there with the Mickey, Hercules, Hades, all that stuff in there. I would just see it just to have the mashup of characters. Who It could be Disney's version of Ready Player One or Space Jam, right? Yes. Yeah, so movie. I don't want a show because Disney, I'm sorry. You do some good shows, but you do not have a good enough track record for the shows on Disney+. Plus. So just make it a movie, please. At least if it's bad, it'll be bad in a shorter amount of time. Chris, do you think a GTA movie could work? Yeah. And they probably will make it. I'm not even kidding. They probably will make that because that's like, that's something easy to do. You know, they'll probably be basing it off the characters in the, what is it? The last, the last game. Was it five? Um, yeah. GTA movie could work. And that brand is so huge. 
uh, the video games right now make way more than a movie could, but yeah, they could, and that would be interesting. I think I think we'll see it. You know what I'm gonna say right now? Next ten years, GTA movie. I'm gonna say we deserve a last Ronin movie. If you're talking about yeah, like the Ninja Turtles, that would be great. It's just a matter of Disney would do it. I mean Disney, Nickelodeon, because Nickelodeon are the ones who own the turtles, and they were nice enough to give us the video game, which is gonna be a little violent, probably rated T instead of M. But that's going to be the closest thing to Disney. I mean, forget, I keep saying Disney to Nickelodeon letting us have the last Ronin in some sort of media form. Now, if that video game sells like crazy and people are just buying, buying, they might go time for us to do a little mature stuff right here because we got to hop onto this. We'll see. We'll see. Right now they're focused on uh, the mute mayhem and then they're they're saying they're working on a live action TMNT. So we'll see how that looks. Do you think the Legend of Zelda? Uh, do you want a Legend of Zelda movie or show? I'll always be honest with you guys. There's very rarely I would want a show. I've always preferred a movie of things. I just like self-contained, rewatchable stories. There's very rarely been shows I will go back and rewatch. Like the only thing is like the Netflix series of Daredevil, the Breaking Bad, um, Better Call Saul. Like there's not a lot of shows I feel like I want to go back and rewatch. But movies, oh. Tons I would love to rewatch. So to me, movies, man. To me, movies. Although I get the argument that a show would probably flesh out the world better and build the characters, I still want the movie. Is Rush Hour 4 still happening? You know, Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan come out in interviews every year saying, oh, it's happening. We're going to make it work. And there's been reports and stuff. I just don't know. I love Chris Tucker. I think he's so hilarious. It was nice seeing him in, in air earlier this year and whatnot. Uh, so I would love to see him and Jackie Chan pair up one more time. I don't think you'd be able to do that much action given their age, but if like they're two cops, you know, maybe teaching the ropes of two younger cops who would have to be like really funny or a really great chemistry, that would be really fun to see. But I doubt it, man. I I, I wish, but I have my doubts it'll ever happen because they keep saying they're going to do it, but then nothing happens. Nothing happens. Have you seen the Looney Tunes show? It's my favorite iteration of the tunes. Uh, love your videos. If you're talking about the one where like Bugs and, and Daffy are like living in a regular house, humans and Lola Bunny, and all, I do like that version too. I like that. But I also enjoy almost all versions of the Looney Tunes cartoons. Even the, the new ones they put on HBO Max. Uh, I thought those were really enjoyable and fun. I'm looking forward to that Daffy and, and Porky movie, the, the animated one that they have coming out. Uh, so yeah, I, I do like that one too. I'm excited for Wicked, Twister, and Stuntman. Oh, that's good. some good picks right there, man. That's some good ones right there. I, I like it. Stuntman, definitely, for sure. 3C Films, the movie. Josh Hutcherson. <laughs> Come play me, Josh Hutcherson. That's who I would want to play me in the movie. Because I, I think we're both the same height, unfortunately. <laughs> So he he would be almost no we're not the same height. I'm actually taller than Josh Hutcherson. No shade on my boy. Sorry, Mike Schmidt. I gotta I gotta admit, okay. Uh, but uh, I don't. I, I have to do something more grand to earn a movie. Okay, so we'll wait and see, my friends. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. All right, that was the last super chat we had there. Uh, I want to thank you guys then so much for stopping by and watching the stream. Hopefully you enjoyed it and us breaking it down. Like I said, tune in tomorrow for where I talk about the most exciting horror movies releasing next year. Got a long compiled list with all the information and stuff, so that'll be good. But y'all are fantastic people. Y'all are a great audience. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much for tuning on to the live stream, Manuel. Take care, my friends. Take care. Love y'all.